Hello, everyone, and welcome to another empowering episode of Pep Talks with Megan De La Concha. I am Megan, your host of the hour, actually half hour, because I know how grueling it is sometimes to listen to like an hour long po- podcast, unless it's a sermon for me, it's like, oh, or like, you know, Brene Brown or um, just any, t- any other transformational speaker. Amazing. But for me, we're going to keep it to 30 minutes. So super excited that you guys are here. Welcome back. And for my first timers, welcome. I hope that you get a chance to check out the many other episodes. I cannot believe this is episode 20. 20! Holy cow, that is crazy. Is it 20? Yeah, 20. We've been doing this for 20 weeks. Shout out to my podcast producer, Riley McElwain, who has been doing such an amazing job. He adds in the music. Um, I refuse to change my cover art. You know, some some people say I need to. Some people say it's really cool, and I'll take it as it's really cool because it just signals um, what started and what has come to be with everything. So welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited that you're a subscriber. If you are, thank you so much for your amazing support. Um, If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a pause and do so right now. And if you're brand new, take a listen and then describe or then describe and then decide to subscribe. Um, But I guarantee you, you will because this podcast is amazing and you're not going to want to miss any episode because it is filled with just real life things that we all go through. And how do I know that? Um, Because I am a personal empowerment and confidence coach and everything that we talk on about on this podcast is um, just real raw relationships about confidence, about authenticity, about resilience, about boundaries. Um, And, you know, just real life things that we all, we all are going through and we're all trying to figure out, but these are things that we need to transform in our lives so that we can become the person that we have always wanted to be and that we're striving to be and also live the life that we want to live because real quick, your life is not going to transform around you. You have to transform your life. So it all starts with you and your own personal transformation. If you're watching this on YouTube, I do apologize that the lighting is weird. All of a sudden we got some major cloud coverage. I didn't even know it was supposed to rain today, which is weird because I had a dream that like an epic storm came through last night and I was sitting right here. So that's really odd. We'll see what happens. But anyway, um, the lights in my room are super dim. They're super soft because this is a place of peace. This is a place of intimacy. This is a place of, and I mean that like (laughs) in fellowship, it's a place of simplicity. It's where I fellowship with the Lord, my husband. Um, It's a sacred space for us. So um, you know, the, the lights in the bedroom are just like the lights in, in here, just very dim, very natural, um, and very soft. So hopefully this ring light is not just like blaring me in the face. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Um, welcome again. I would like to introduce you to the topic that we're going to be talking about. We have talked about toxicity the past two episodes. Episode one was hidden toxic habits. And I kind of went over a personal story of mine where I picked out specific habits that I had been doing and also the people around me and in my life were doing that I really kind of be, be, became to accept as, you know, normal, um, as harmless. And like, that's just how people are. That's how best friends talk. That's what you do. And when in fact, it's actually a sign of having no boundaries. It's a toxic habit that we do. And it also signifies, unfortunately, that you don't have any respect for others nor for yourself. So we kind of went into that a little bit. And then last week's episode was um, all about red flags and how you can tune into your body um, and discover who is toxic around you. It's not that you have to wait for somebody to do something horrible. Most of the time, that's how we find out. But 
as you grow into your self-awareness and as you discover yourself and as you discover what it is you stand for and what your beliefs are, um, you can instantly pick up someone's energy and you, we automatically think of it as being judgmental, but it's not. Like judgmental is having like a really just mean spirit. Like, oh my God, look at her hair. Ooh, gross. Like what is she wearing? This and that. That's being judgmental, right? But when you come across someone and you're like, I don't know, I just get a weird vibe from them. That's your instinct talking, people. That is your gut feeling. God has given that to you to be able to protect your energy. because, And then usually if you have an interaction with these people, you feel drained. You don't feel good. You feel a little uncomfortable. Like their questions are weird. Maybe their tone is weird. It's just all around weird. And um and so that's how you, you know, you you tune into your feelings. So we went over that a little bit on how to recognize red flags and other people. Um, and then this week we are going over 10 ways to build and preserve boundaries, especially in toxic situations and with toxic people. I am a research girl, so um, I do have three master's degrees in public health, and mental health has always been my forte, just absolutely obsessed with it, love it. I think everything starts with the mind, and the mind is just so powerful that it drives everything in your life, and I always say, like, even about either you're physically, you know, losing weight, or you're moving somewhere, or you're growing inside yourself. Um, I always say that where the mind goes, the body's going to follow. And that can be, you know, figuratively, <laughs> figuratively speaking, or realistically speaking. Um, so it's always just been a huge, huge passion of mine. And so I have been researching um, because I've had to set my own boundaries in my life. That's a part of my growth plan. I have my growth plan. And one of the action steps is identifying um, and building better boundaries for situations, um, especially situations that you can't necessarily get away from, aka family members and coworkers, and sometimes friends, depending on what type of um, crowd you're running with. So... Um, I do a lot of research because I love evidence-based things and I love um, psychology and, you know, I think when people hear that these are science-based facts, uh, that they find, you know, more authenticity with it. They find it to be more credible. So I'm always researching stuff, especially before I talk about it, not because I don't know it, but just because I want to add more evidence-based or scientific-based facts to these things because these are items, these are topics that really help you. Um, I also know that I'm not going to fit 10 things into 30 minutes because I'm definitely not going to sit here and rattle off to you just 10 subtitles and have no body to them. So I'm going to split this up because with everything I've written down, and if you're watching, excuse me, I am looking down because I did take my notes. It's a lot. And I had a lot of, you know, I always take notes. Um, and I have a lot of things that I just want to touch on. So I'm splitting this into two parts. So this is part one, and this is um, one through five. And then next week, we will go through six through 10 um, because it's a lot of great information. So we are already almost 10 minutes in. Let's get these five suckers in 20 minutes. So welcome to 10 ways to build and preserve better boundaries. So why do we need boundaries in our life? Well, <laughs> they are essential to healthy relationships, really, um, because when we think of setting boundaries, we think of setting boundaries with other people. But it's also essential to really just having a healthy life overall. Um, and it's not just something that is just there. Like you don't just have a knack for setting boundaries. It is definitely a skill that one must learn. So this is why I wanted to bring this to you because a lot of people, including myself, did not know how to set boundaries, let alone adhere to boundaries or even really know what boundaries were. So, you know, for many of us, boundary building is pretty new. It's a new conversation. It's a kind of a new concept and it can also present with its different challenges um, depending on who you're dealing with. 
So when you establish healthy boundaries, you um, it, it essentially means that you know and you understand what your limits are. So um, let's get into some insight for how to build better boundaries and how to maintain them. And one and two for me kind of flow together, which is naming your limits and also tuning into your feelings. Because um, if you are tuning into your feelings, it that helps you identify what your physical, what your emotional, what your mental, and what your spiritual limits are. So you first have to know what those limits are, which means tuning into your feelings, right? (laughs) Which means becoming aware of what you feel, becoming aware of what you accept and what you don't accept. So being very clear on what your physical boundaries are in relationships, what your emotional boundaries are in relationships. um, And that's all relationships and mental and what your spiritual limits are. You have to know those and identify those first before you can set good boundaries. And it's like, yeah, well, duh. But you know what? (laughs) A lot of times it is dub, but not everybody realizes that. So um, really naming your limits kind of rolls into tuning into your feelings. And we covered that a little bit in last week's episode. So very briefly, tuning into your feelings is really about noticing different cues and noticing different red flags about when you have different interactions with people. Um, If you find yourself having a conversation or interacting with somebody and your discomfort is like really high, like, oh my God, like I need to get out of here right now. um, It's really good to kind of Take a step back and ask yourself, well, like, what is causing that? Are they talking about something that is triggering? Is it really just their ignorance on something? Are they being disrespectful to me? Um, Are they, you know, in my personal space, in my personal bubble? Are they asking personal questions? Are they making unacceptable remarks? It's really important for us to become aware of these different interactions so that we can break them down and set better boundaries for ourselves. So um, resentment is also comes along with tuning into your feelings. And that usually comes from the feeling of that we're being taken advantage of or not appreciated. And this comes mainly in the family atmosphere. Because resenting somebody is often a sign that we're just pushing ourselves either beyond our own limits because we feel guilty, um, because we um, someone else is either imposing their expectations on us or worse, or we put that on ourselves that we're supposed to fill, fulfill somebody else's expectations or their views or their values. And that happens a lot in families. Um, So just to take a minute right here to tell you about a family, not in Bel Air. (laughs) I know. Anyway, just had to do that. Had to finish that. But, um, you know, when we're in families, um, we are, whether it's religious background, whether it is um, a cultural, a strong cultural background, we are brought brought up with specific beliefs specific ideas, ideals, expectations, um, practices. And when that is instilled in us and we grow into our adult forms, and maybe we start to want different types of experiences that take us out of our belief system or take us out of our cultural um you know, expectancies or out of the norm, out of, you know, what we were brought up. I mean, we all have, you know, your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your grandma and grandpa saying, you know, we taught you better than that. You were taught better than that. You know better than that. I didn't teach you that. Where'd you get that from? Usually that comes because the decisions that we're making, and these are not bad decisions, they're different decisions. If we're making a decision in our life to experience something different, to experience something that's outside of our family upbringing, um, 
it can come come off to our parents, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles, our brothers and sisters. It can come off to our family as as being, you know, defiant or disrespectful, and in a lot of cases, dishonoring the name because we are expected to um, to act a certain way. We're expected to respond a certain way. We're expected to react a certain way to certain things. And when we don't exhibit those behaviors, um, it can really trigger other people who, you know, are stickler for the way that they were brought up or their belief system. And so that's why it's so hard to set boundaries in families because that's really where you're going to get the most backlash. And also you can't necessarily cut them off. I mean, in extreme cases, yes, 100%, absolutely. But if you have cut a family member off, um, it still takes a lot of work because you deal with a lot of emotions such as guilt um, and resentment. And then you also deal with their feelings. And then you also deal with, you know, when people try to come back in their lives and just a whole, it's a whole thing. And it's for, you know, a really long time. And that's just their family. It's something that never necessarily leaves our hearts. Um, so setting boundaries in our family can be extremely hard. We are taught that, especially as children, that we should just accept who our mothers are, accept who our fathers are, and just accept it and roll with it and be done with it. But what we're taught is not necessarily right. We are allowed to challenge beliefs. We're allowed to not hold ourselves to specific expectations, especially if it's not in alignment with who we are. Um, we are allowed to challenge and break different barriers and generational cycles. That's where it comes from. Genera- generational beliefs and cycles come from um, not setting boundaries in our family and not being comfortable or being afraid of saying no because we are brought up that this is what we're just supposed to do. We're the kids. We're supposed to honor thy mother and father. Um, you know, we're supposed to go to church every Sunday. We're supposed to say our prayers. We're supposed to, we're supposed to eat our veggies, all of those things. So when we're tuning into our feelings and we feel that a family member is making us uncomfortable or we find resentment, it's usually because we're not able to set boundaries around these different or around these people in our family. Um, But we have to know that when someone acts in a way, regardless of who it is, that makes you feel uncomfortable, it is a cue that they are violating or crossing a boundary. So one of number three of building better boundaries is to be direct. And this is where a lot, a lot of resilience and a lot of confidence has to come into play. And you really have to know and stand for who you are and fight for who you are um, with everything you have. Again, especially if you are being direct with a family member. Um, Family members seem to think that it's their right to just barge in on someone's life. It's their right to know every single thing about their life. It's their right to um, tread on personal space. Um, A lot of families believe there are no boundaries, right? There's no secrets and everybody should know from Aunt Betty to Uncle John to Grandma May to little cousin Johnny. Everyone should know your business, your family. And that's something that we hear all the time. We're family. What do you, you can be yourself around here when, as a matter of fact, it's like, this is the last place I can be myself around. (laughs) So it's like, what are we talking about here? But, um, but anyway, you know, personal space and, and boundaries in a lot of families don't necessarily exist and they should. They should, and it's okay for them to exist because you're still an individual and you need to have boundaries and you need to have respect for other people's boundaries as well as them having respect for you. And that needs to be an expectation of yours. So being direct, um, a lot of people maintaining healthy boundaries doesn't necessarily require a direct and clear-cut dialogue. Um, And this is the case when people are similar in their communication styles and their views and their just general approach to life. Um, But a lot of times, if we're setting boundaries with toxic people or toxic behavior, 
uh, our approaches and our personalities and our views are not the same. So in those cases, it does take for us to be direct if we have to. So um, there's other times that we're going to need to be direct. Like I was just saying, for instance, in a romantic relationship where time can be an issue, we all know when we're young and in love, we want to spend every waking moment with the person that we love. And it comes off as needy. It comes off as clingy. It comes off as attachment. Um, and we've all done it. We have all done it, especially when we're in the awkward years of trying to find ourselves, but we're taught, we don't know how to communicate that with people. And I'm not talking about when you're in your twenties and you know, you're, you're figuring it out. I'm talking about when you are grown adults, um, we still don't have the communication skills to be able to set those boundaries appropriately and with grace and with compassion and with kindness. So, you know, if your boyfriend or your girlfriend wants to spend every waking moment with you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. You're afraid to speak up. You're So you just stay silent. And inside, it's killing you, and it's killing your relationship. And where you could have just said, hey, listen, I really enjoy being around you, but this is who I am. I really like having time to myself. It has nothing to do with you or not wanting to be around you. This is to make me a better and healthier person um, so that when we are together, I am more fulfilled. I am happy. I'm not stressed out. Like I just, that's a natural part of just being a human is we love being social, but we also need to be with our own selves by ourselves. So when we are able to communicate these directly, you are able to save the relationship. But a lot of us are scared because a lot of us think that they're not going to understand or they're going to get pissed off. They're going to get mad. And you know what? If they are pissed off, if they are mad, if they don't understand, then that again is a red flag that their emotional intelligence isn't necessarily where maybe you want it to be or need it to be in that relationship. So that's an instance where, um, you know, where you need to be more direct in setting your boundaries. And it's not in a bad way. It's for a healthier relationship. It's for a healthier life. Number four, give yourself permission. And I know we talked about this in the last episode as well, but I'm going to include it back in here again with family fear of saying no, um, guilt, self-doubt, these are all big potential pitfalls, right? So we might be afraid of what the other person's response is if we decide to set and enforce our boundaries. We might feel extremely guilty by speaking up to a family member, um, knowing it's going to cause an issue or knowing that they're not going to understand where you're coming from because their expectation of you reacting or responding is so ingrained in the family tradition, in the family culture. Um, We, again, believe that we should be able to cope with a certain situation or say yes, because we're the daughter, we're the son. Um, We, you know, even though we feel drained, even though we might feel like we're taken advantage of, um, we are taught that this is what you should do because you're family. You should be doing this. You should be sacrificing because you're family. You should be uncomfortable and just handle it because you're family. And oftentimes that makes us wonder if we even deserve to have boundaries in the first place. And the answer is yes, you do deserve to have boundaries in the first place because again, boundaries is just a sign of self-respect and also being able to respect other people. So give your permission or give yourself permission to set boundaries and work hard to really preserve them. If you get pushback from your family, if you get pushback from your friends, if you get pushback from your boyfriend or girlfriend, explain to them why these are important to you and continue to act in such a way. Continue. It's just like a parent and a child. You have to reinforce, 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 reinforce. And if they're not going to learn to respect what it is you're trying to do, then it's time to reevaluate the relationship, the friendship, or it's time to really impose physical boundaries um, with a family member as far as, you know, I'm not going to come over as often 
if you're not going to respect the boundaries that I set in place. So it's a work in progress. It's not going to be a one-time conversation, um, but it's important that you again decide and identify what it is that you stand for, what it is you're going to accept and what it is you're not going to accept, and then stay steadfast in that message. Don't just say, I need my boundaries and then give mixed signals and, you know, go against those boundaries or blur those lines because then it's not the other person's fault. That's your fault. You have to take accountability for that. It's not for them to decide when you want boundaries and when you don't want boundaries, right? So you have to have the confidence and the resilience to know that this is what I stand for and I'm going to continue to stand for it. And if we have to make adjustments and if I have to go further, I'm prepared to do that. Even though I don't want to, that's where I'm at. And people and your family will tend to respect that. So that was number four, which is giving yourself permission. Number five is one of my favorites, and that is practicing self-awareness. And again, boundaries are all about honing in on our feelings, honoring them, knowing what we stand for, being direct if we need to be. And if you notice that you're slipping or you're not sustaining your boundaries, then we need to turn the compass inward yet again and ask, well, what has changed? Um, What am I doing? What is the other person doing? What is a situation that's, you know, making me resentful or stressed? What's the conversation about? And I want you to definitely self-reflect and really ask yourself, what is it? Why am I feeling this way? And what am I going to do about the situation? What do I have control over? So a short story, there's somebody in my life that definitely makes me feel uncomfortable and resentful, not in an unsafe way, but in just a way where I don't like, I didn't like who I was being around this person. And I definitely like who I am sometimes because you get, you go back into, into old habits and old ways. Right. But now I'm very self-aware of them. And I know that being around this person could potentially put me in a vulnerable state where I might say things or where I might exhibit old habits and exhibit old patterns and talk in old ways or fall into the trap of gossip. Um, And I know that in order to set boundaries, the only thing I can control is me. I know because of of the circle that we run in, I'm going to be around this person. Um, And this can go for coworkers or it can go for family, but you know, this specific person, I'm just going to be around them. And I'm not going to sit back and say, um, you know, I'm not going to any function socially because, or hanging out with my group of friends because I, because this person's going to be there. That's not an option for me. Um, I can't control if that person is in the same circle of friends. But what I can control is my interaction with them. I can be civil. I can be cordial. I can be friendly. We can talk about um, how is work going, this and that. But am I going to give them details of my life? Absolutely not. Am I going to go into further discussion with them? No. Are they somebody that I can vent to about an issue that I'm having with, um, you know, If I, let's say my husband and I were fighting or, you know, your spouse is fighting or you have issues with your kids or another family member, or you're just feeling down on yourself, am I going to get into that with them? 100% no. So it took trial and error. And there were definitely times where I came home after an interaction with this person and was like, oh my gosh, like, I hate that I feel this way. I was gossiping about this person. I said things that, you know, were just like, I felt like I was going back to the old me and I don't like that. And it's not necessarily that this person has a power over me. You just fall into old feelings, old habits. It's so easy and you need to forgive yourself for that. But it also just makes you more aware of the boundaries that you need to set. So now I know going into situations where I know this person is going to be there, I am mentally strong and how I'm going to act. I protect my energy. I protect my self-respect and I set my boundaries before I go. I've never had to say one word to this person and boom, we're on our way. So I've been able to hang out with this person, come home, feel amazing about myself and carry on. So those are the first five ways of how to set healthy boundaries for yourself. And that is naming your limits, tuning into your feelings, being direct, 
giving yourself permission and practice self-awareness. Stay tuned next week for the next five. Um, follow me on Instagram every, and Facebook. Everything's below and visit my website for more amazing fun and updates. I hope to see you guys again or you guys see me again next week as we finish up this conversation and setting boundaries so we have a happier, healthier life and relationships. Bye.